Thank you uh, to the organization for inviting us to come here. Uh, the talk today is uh, done by our research group in uh, University Ramon Llull in Barcelona and also by our spin-off uh, Sagetis who is developing uh, nanocarriers for targeting blood-brain barrier. It has been It has been uh, nice to be uh, here after my colleagues because uh, they have shown uh, nice examples of uh, nanocarriers that can cross the blood brain barrier. And uh, the previous speaker also have shown you uh, a lot of uh, information about the blood brain barrier that I don't have to explain now. I am perhaps not using my 10 minutes, but only five minutes <laughs> of explanation. But the idea is to uh, targeting the blood brain barrier. Uh, the blood brain barrier, as has already been explained, is a really, uh, forms a really niche protecting the brain against other or different things uh, regarding the possibility of entering uh, other uh, not uh, good things. Uh, the idea here is how we can uh, target the blood brain barrier. Uh, specifically for, for blood brain barrier, for the transporting, we can see diffusion uh, facilitating transport by carrier systems, receptor mediated endocytosis, and paracellular transfer. And uh, we are using uh, this receptor mediated transitosis looking for specific peptides that can interact with some of the receptors on the blood brain barrier allowing the crossing of all nanoparticles. Uh, the idea or the design of our systems uh, are looking like this. We have a biodegradable polymeric material that we have designed to be biodegradable uh, using uh, uh, a tuning approach. Uh, I mean that we can uh, tune the um, time of degradation uh, allowing a sustained release. And we have designed some targeting peptides and we use our nanoparticles to load different uh, pharmaceutical ingredients. The one that I am showing today is a drug model, Pactitaxel, against uh, brain tumor. Uh, our nanoparticles are around uh, 200 nanometers. More or less, our last versions are 150 nanometers with a zeta potential, depending on how to measure, but it's around uh, uh, negatively charged. And we can tailor all of the systems. Here you have uh, the features of the polymer, combines hydrophobic polyester moiety with flexible hydrophilic PEG, the surface uh, peptides, I will show in uh, a moment exactly how that does it mean, crossing through the LRP1 mechanism. And we have uh, identified several peptides and protected through the company. And we have demonstrated, not here, but in different papers, that we can load with our system different APIs. And good thing for the treatment of the brain tumor is the uh, release profile, as I mentioned before, can be modified by changing the hydrophobic, hydrophilic ratios. Uh, regarding the polymer, we have uh, the main uh, polymer that allows the loading of the nano, uh, of the APIs, APAs, uh, but also we have a second polymer that we use to attach the peptide. Why we use this approach? because then our system is quite flexible. We can modify easily the peptide that we like uh, to attach to the nanoparticles without modifying the main core of them. Uh, or the preparation of the system with the two polymers we call poly polymer P and polymer 2P is nanoprecipitation and we obtain uh, very reproducible and with low polyexpressivity nanoparticles based on this technique because we are now as a company 
in uh, <coughs> regulatory of the clinical, we have already demonstrated that we our system is replaceable and can be uh, <coughs> scaled up to GMP process. Uh, the main thing that we can describe here is uh, which is the receptor that we target regarding the different mm, receptors that they are on the br they are described on the blood brain barrier we uh, choose the LLP1 for two reasons the first that we have some experience uh, working with this receptor and the second that some of the uh, cells related uh, with the tumors uh, also overexpress the receptor so we in this situation we call this a double targeting as the targeting to uh, overcome the broadband barrier and also to specific uh, or, or to better target the tumor cells in the brain. Uh, we uh, have done, um, we uh, make a, a here only two slides or two pictures of that. We have done a lot of uh, <coughs> in silico analysis regarding the how is the interaction of different peptides with this uh, LRP1 mm, receptor. And at the end, we obtain three big families of uh, peptides that can be used on that. And I am going to show you now the results of, our best, uh, of one of our best uh, candidates. Uh, we have demonstrated here, it's difficult to see uh, because the projection, but that uh, or the internalization of the blood brain uh, barrier uh, cells of the, or nanoparticles is really by a <coughs> receptor mediated uh, endocytosis because it's done at uh, 37 Celsius degrees and not four Celsius degrees. Uh, here, some examples of the sustainable release depending on the amount of uh, Paquita cell that we load. It's interesting to mention here that we are achieving loadings of m more than 15% of Paquita cell that does not use uh, or does not describe in the literature with uh, similar polyester uh, examples. And uh, here you can see the in vitro efficacy uh, with our nanoparticles against the U87 uh, cells, where it's, it can be uh, seen that the targeting peptide allows better uptake of the nanoparticles from the cells, allowing uh, better efficacy ag against this kind of cells. We also do a lot of in vivo experiments. I am going to show here mm, by ending two of them. We carry out some uh, <coughs> uh, the uh, in vitro uh, in vivo sorry perfusion and we can see that our uh, systems with our targeting peptides show 20 fold increase uh, of Paquita cell into the brain comparing with Paquita cell alone showing that the use of our systems can uh, overcome the problem of the broad brain barrier, allowing to the model drug to enter the brain in situ brain perfusion. And my last picture before the conclusions, here you can see the Kaplan-Meier uh, uh, graph regarding the survival of uh, different uh, mice with uh, untreated mice and nanoparticles treated with our peptide using an autotopic brain uh, tumor. And you can see that the survival is uh, clear improved by our treatment. Some of these results that we have comparing with uh, uh, free Paquita cell and also tenofovamine show that we have at least 20% uh, more survival than other treatments with uh, the same uh, brain tumor model. As a conclusion, the nanoparticles combined in a specific peptide which targets the LRP1 and the degradable polyester polymer 
can transport therapeutic quantities of acute axial through the broadband barrier. The peptide targets both the broadband barrier and the U87 cancer cells. It's possible to tune the drug release to the design of the polymer characteristics, and the strategy can be used to target different APIs and oligonucleotides. Acknowledgement thanks uh, to uh, the co-author for this work and the company who funded the work, and all of you for your uh, interest. So my question is, have you quantified how much of your carrier go into the brain? And because you said it targets the brain as well as the brain cancer. Yes. So do you know any information about the preferential uptake to cancer versus normal brain? And what's that brain like overall? That's the first question. Okay. Uh, uh, okay. Yes, yeah. Uh, we didn't uh, quantify in vivo. We quantify in in vitro using this U87 cells that they are used for creating the tumor in the brain. Thank you. And the second question is, how does your, uh, your targeting peptide compare to angiopep 2 Yeah, uh, I didn't want to show the results because I finished. But uh, asking your question, uh, there are two, two things. Regarding the targeting and crossing, we are, uh, a little bit better, okay? I, I don't want to comment on that because it's a competition. Mm -hmm. But uh, the thing that, that clearly is uh, an improvement is because uh, paclitaxel is lowered uh, in a nanoparticle, the side effects are much less. For instance, in uh, the mice test, uh, when you compare treating really with paclitaxel, that is the approach of angiochem, angiopep, uh, they lose uh, quickly uh, weight and some of the deaths are due to the effect of uh, paclitaxel and, ke and all of these chemicals related with paclitaxel. And in our case, uh, also Bible is independent of uh, the side effects of the paclitaxel. But in the angiochem, you don't have the particles, so you just have... Yeah, yeah, the 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 this so what, what I mean. So what if you have your the peptide on your particle. Yeah, yeah. This, this is what I mean. That's what you mean. Yeah, yeah. The, the packet cell is free, so do you have the same the same side effects that with the packet cell alone. Yeah, very good question. Yeah, uh, we have uh, also studied uh, uh, in another receptor and we develop uh, peptides and this is uh, the, the one of the reasons why when we design this 2P polymer is for combining uh, two polymers. We have some results ongoing now. It seems that uh, they are a little bit better, but uh, still there are a lot of difficulties. For us it's difficult to have these in vivo facilities to repeat the experiments on that, yeah. And just one second question is, um, people have been looking at different ways of killing the cancer. Like you've got a cancer that's in the blood brain barrier mm -hmm. and then you're killing it with those things that keep yeah. killing yeah. and leave the lethal efficacy behind. And some of the strategies have been, okay, well, you put the outer layer of the polymer of blood brain around the inside. Mm -hmm. Have you actually looked at it through the stage of the blood brain molecule about what you see when you switch? Okay. Blood brain barrier, mm. and whether that piece is left behind as it's going through, and then the next piece down the stage is where you would kill it. Yeah, um, not really, but I uh, just uh, keep in my mind and to, to okay. have your advice. Thank you very much.
if I'm right, your animal studies, uh, there, w there were no survivors, is that correct? As yet, no, there are no survivors, no. Okay. Um, have you thought about using more potent drugs to actually push that curve up in that case? Yeah, uh, yeah but the problem was with our investors. Okay. They okay. want to a really standardized uh, drug. Um, yeah, yeah you, you, m you, might w you might do better, and also all drugs aren't equal, and uh, the top uh, may well be better. Okay. So use a more potent drug, and that's one of the great lessons, really, I guess, in other areas. Sometimes people have failed because they haven't had good enough drugs. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Yes, thank you. Please go again. Going to the final part of this session, Professor Bernard. Professor Bernard.